All right, joining us on the Harris Highlight Show is the 2017 ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Bradley Chubb. Bradley, thank you for taking the time out of your day. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Thanks for joining. Um, you spent four years as a member of the NC State Wolfpack. In your four uh, years there, what was your favorite moment? Uh, no, I had a lot of memories from, from college and all that, but I'll say my favorite moment was just um, – the locker room after uh, the Boston College game this year when I found out that I broke the uh, NC State sack record. Hey, Bradley, speaking as, speaking on sacks, you finished your career with the most in NC State history, that past former number one overall pick, Mario Williams. How special of an accomplishment was that for you? I mean, it was huge because um, my junior year, I got under the uh, opportunity to wear his, wear his, uh, his number. So wearing a number nine and being able to, to surpass such a great player was definitely uh, – Definitely a huge accomplishment, especially somebody that uh, they talked about my whole time at NC State, just being a defensive end, and and um, that was the standard. You know, when I got there, was to to go through and set a record and and be the, the number one draft choice. And now I'm on track to 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 be drafted early, so hopefully that works out for me. And um, just breaking that record just meant a lot to me. So you joined players like Charles Woodson, Terrell Suggs, Luke Keekley, and, and Aaron Donald, who've won the Nagurski Award for Most Outstanding Defensive Player of the Year. How does it feel to have your name mentioned among them? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's really surreal, to be honest with you. Um, just seeing those guys play throughout college and throughout their NFL careers and to, and to um, be up there in, in names with them in the same company as them is, is definitely a, a wonderful feeling. Um, as I was at the Nagurski Banquet, they called it the Heisman for defense. And so just being able to win that such a prestigious award definitely meant a lot to me. And to be named with those guys that you just named is, is amazing. Going away from this past season, your career at NC State, when you were younger, you were given the nickname Tigger by your family. What's the meaning behind that? Is it because you're full of energy? What is that? Yeah, I was always like jumping around, bouncing around. And um, so like every time – my mom would want to take a nap or something. I would come in there and start hopping on her or something. And then she just, she just told me to sit down and, and got frustrated with me. And then, like, one time I was hopping around and she called me Tigger and it just slipped out. Like, I don't know what. And it just stuck, really. And um, growing up, like, they, they probably stopped calling me that when I was about uh, 11 or 12. But I still had a lot of energy. But, yeah, it just happened for me bouncing around, bouncing off the walls, running and hitting my brother and running back to, the, to my room and just, just doing all type of little kid things so i mean everyone knows about bradley chubb the player that you know you're full of energy having a lot of fun on the field but what's one thing that fans don't know or would be surprised to learn about you um i think they'll be surprised that uh that i'm just a a guy that really doesn't like to do much honestly like so i'm i, I got this persona on the field like i'm a got a mean streak to me and, and all that but off the field i'm just a, probably one of the nicest guys and i'm just i'm never really doing anything to be honest with you like if i'm not watching film or anything, i'm just in my room just honestly staring at the ceiling and just just that just being you know what i'm saying just to myself to my thoughts and uh, that's probably i mean i know it sounds a little weird but that's just that's just who i am Hey Bradley, you played a lot, or you played at a lot of venues during your four seasons at NC State, not including Carter Finley. What was your favorite to play at, and why? My favorite to play at, uh, it had to be either between Virginia Tech or Clemson. Um, Clemson was one of those stadiums that just always brought a lot of energy, and um, that that opposing energy is, is always fueling to opposing teams, uh, away teams, if you know what I mean. So like. Just in that in that stadium all the time, everybody on the sideline yelling at us and all that. It definitely was a fun crowd. And V Tech, that that Inter Sandman was probably one of the uh, probably one of the best uh, college college football entries. And so being able to, to to witness that firsthand was pretty cool. But yeah, so I would uh, I'd probably go Clemson out of those two though. Yeah, going back to Clemson, I'm sure a lot of fans uh, remember this past season, uh, your little encounters with Kelly Bryant. You were kind of running around, taking his towels. Um, take us through that. What was going on there on the field between you two? I mean, that's just something I do every game. So, like, uh, throughout the season, um, I made a bet with uh, some of the D-linemen. Like, hey, I, I bet I get a towel from every quarterback we play, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, Usually the quarterbacks just laugh it off, and then, so I stop because I, I see that's not getting to them. You know what I'm saying? If they just laugh it off, I'm like, hey, you crazy for doing that. So I'll be like, all right, that's not affecting them. I'm going to just stop. And so uh, the Clemson game with Kelly, like, 
I saw that it bothered him. And so if I see something bothers you, I'm going to keep doing it <laughs> and try to get you out your game. And then uh, – so I just kept kept doing that, kept getting him riled up and all that. I mean, but at the end of the day, it, it wasn't nothing like uh, that I don't like to do or anything. It was just a little mind game I played that just, that just happened to get caught on camera. Like I said, football's a mind game, and you definitely won that battle with most of the quarterbacks you played it with. Yeah, exactly. So I want to I wanna ask you about an issue that we've actually talked about time and time again on the show when we've had uh, viewers interact with this. But you decided to sit out the bowl game versus Arizona State, and we tend to see so many players sit out after the regular season ends um, in this day and age. But I was hoping that we could get your perspective about this situation, you know, a perspective from somebody who has their professional career in mind rather than just fans and journalists. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a hard subject to talk about because you can see it from either way. And just being a guy who's who was in the situation firsthand, it just um, – like last year when I saw uh, McCaffrey and all those guys sitting out, I was thinking, man, um, how like how uh, how cool it would be just to play the last game with your teammates and all that. You know what I'm saying? Just, just thinking like that but not being in, in their shoes. And when I actually got a chance to be in their shoes, I just had to uh, – Take a step back and honestly think about how, because um, at the end of the day, this is like this is my life and how I'm trying to make my livelihood is uh, playing the game of football and being the the best prepared I can be. And so, um, throughout four years, like you said, I gave my all to to NC State. I gave my all to the coaches, the players, everybody in that facility, everybody, everybody that that's associated with NC State. I gave my all to them, and they all know that. Um, Coach Dorn, he uh, he understood completely. When um, he actually came up to me and, and started talking about it initially, so he understood completely. My teammates understood completely. It's just it's a uh, at to, it's a bad to say it's a selfish thing, but at the end of the day, it is a selfish thing just because you're looking out for yourself. Thanks for thanks for breaking that down for us. Uh, for you personally, how quickly did you decide that that was a move that you wanted to make before the Sun Bowl? Um, it took a lot of a lot of thought actually. So, um. Going after the last game of the uh, after the UNC game, last game of the year, I was a little nicked up and all that from the season, just uh, just minor injuries that were just nagging me the whole season. I just played through, and um, at the end of the season, like I just wanted to focus on getting all those injuries, like you know, what I'm saying back back in order and back so my body to be be uh, 100. percent And um, as I was doing that, um, the time came closer and closer to the Sun Bowl, so. Um, like I really didn't get like I mean I was never really hurt hurt but just like tic tac in like tic tac injuries like I said so getting those fully healed it was only like a, a week and a half from practice and I had it I hadn't been um, practicing with the team at that moment just doing rehab just doing working out just trying to get my body back to to how I know my body should feel and so um, that was probably the moment like probably a week and a half out before. Hey Bradley, looking ahead to the NFL draft, experts release mock drafts on a weekly basis. Do you read into that at all and like to see where you're projected to go, or do you try to ignore that stuff? I mean, I definitely see it because um, my name's tagged in it, so I see it as a notification. But um, try not to put too much thought into it unless if somebody's talking negative about me. Then I use that as motivation. So I mean, all the good stuff people say about me. I mean, like I said, I worked hard for that, but that, that's not where my my career ends, and that's not where my journey is. I want to see what the bad stuff people say, and so I could, so I could see what what flaws people see in my game, and, and how I could uh, go about and, and prove those people wrong by attacking them and making them better. Growing up, I'm, I'm playing football, I'm guessing it's every young football player's dream to make it to the NFL. Has it sunk in that you're so close to achieving this lifelong dream? Not at all. That's the crazy thing about it. Like, um, even even though I'm out here training for the combine now, it's just like. I feel like, like I feel like the the NFL is just so far away. If that makes sense, like um, just because I've been dreaming about it and been hoping for it so long, it, it just doesn't feel like it's actually right here. I feel like it's really gonna hit me um, after the combine and all that, after the uh, the workouts and all that that we do. So I mean, right now I'm just enjoying it. The process um, is definitely surreal. Um, so I'm just just trying to take it all full full force right now. You said you're out training. Where are you training at? I'm training in Exos and uh, San Diego. Good one. That's one of the Exos is one of the top ones. You see all those these recruits training out all across the country. Great program yeah. there. It's great. Bradley, staying on the topic of the combine for a quick second, do you have a specific drill that you're most looking forward to displaying to a bunch of the NFL coaches and scouts at the combine? 
Uh, just all of them, really, to be honest with you. Um, just showing off my athletic ability. I mean, a lot of uh, I feel like the, my tapes shows my athletic ability, but um, being able to for these coaches and for these people to see me firsthand um, at these drills, I feel like it's, it's really exciting and something I'm really looking forward to. You know, speaking of your abilities and with the NFL draft coming up very quickly upon us, uh, who do you think you would model? What current NFL player do you think you would model your game after the most? Oh, man. Uh, I would say Khalil Mack just because he's so dominant in everything he does. Like, he's a, he's technically an outside backer, but, I mean, the way that man rushes the passes is probably one of the best in the game. Um, his power is, is second to nine, I feel like. And he's just an all-around great player, so uh, probably Khalil Mack. You remember Khalil Mack made the Pro Bowl as two different positions last season. So exactly. he's got a little bit of both in him. That's what I'm saying. So, and guys like Cam Jordan as well, uh, when um, scouts came to the to NC State to talk to me, they said I uh, played a lot like Cam Jordan. That, that, that's, got a, that's one of the guys that had a great uh, season this year and definitely going to keep improving. Um, we actually played under the same defensive line coach, Coach Nielsen. Um, was there my uh, freshman and junior year, and he was with the Saints this year. So um, Cam Jordan's a guy I really look at as well. Now, we know the draft is still, you know, over two months away, but it seems like now it's gotten to where a point where it's kind of a competition between, you know, the draftees of who can outdress the other. Have you given any thought yet to your wardrobe for draft night? Uh, if I'm lucky enough to get, to get invited to Dallas, then, yeah, I got I got some uh, some plans that I got. You know what I'm saying? I got some some different colorways I, I hope nobody's really thinking about. So when I wear it, it's, it's like, oh, snap, look at Chug, look what Chug got on. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, I mean, hope, hoping you do get the invite there for draft night. When Roger Goodell walks out into that podium and he does call your name, what should the fans of the team that you're drafted by expect to see from Bradley Chubb? Uh, just a guy who's relentless in pass rushing, relentless in his motor, relentless in his effort to the ball, to somebody that's going to um, give 100% for uh, every play and never take a playoff. Well, Bradley, once again, from all of us, we truly appreciate the time. Um, on a personal note, I just want to say thank you for reaching out to me the last two years. I had a blast making your highlight tape, one of the you know Definitely. most fun I've, I've ever had. And we wish you nothing but the best in the NFL, the most success. And we're always welcome to having you call back in and talk more football in the near future. Sounds good. I appreciate those highlights as well. All right, my man, you have yourself a good week and best of luck out there the next few months. All right, thank you. You do the same.